Honorable Minister, my name is Yashodhra Rajasindhya. I'm a member of parliament from Gwalior. This is regarding your, the government's stand on Arunachal Pradesh versus China. There is a sufficient buildup on that border, and we hear that there are helipads built, there are airstrips built on the other side. And we do hear every now and then about how there is encroachment on your borders of Arunachal and how they do not accept that Arunachal is a part of our India. What is the government doing to make sure that Arunachal remains a safe place for India and for Indians over there? And are we doing anything to connect more connectivity with Arunachal versus the rest of the country, Arunachal versus China? If I can have some information on that. Well, China claims that Arunachal is disputed territory. We reject that claim. Just as they are building roads, uh, forward posts, helipads, we are building massive infrastructure in Arunachal. We are building several kilometers of roads, uh, several uh, helipads, and several landing strips there too. Uh, we do what we think is necessary. We are not in competition with China there. We think what is, we do what we think is necessary, and I think uh, enough is being done. Now, let's also remember that these are borders which are not quite uh, accurately delineated or marked. It's possible that sometimes Chinese troops will come into areas we think is ours and we know is ours, but they think it's theirs. And sometimes Indian troops stray into areas which they think is theirs, but we think is ours. But well, that's right across the India-China border. That happens. Nothing unusual is happening in 2009 or 2010, which did not happen a few years ago. There's nothing unusual about these uh, stray instances. So you can be assured that nothing unusual has happened last year or this year. Now, as far as uh, the Arunachalis are concerned, they have turned out in large numbers, over 70%, to vote in elections to elect a government. In fact, the Arunachalis uh, uh, speak Hindi uh, more fluently than many other people I know. Uh, Arunachalis regard themselves as part of India. The Arunachalis have uh, uh, no wish uh, to allow Chinese influence. In fact, uh, there's a student movement there which has said Chinese goods should not be sold in Arunachal uh, shops and Arunachal markets. There is a boycott Chinese goods. If you take the people of Arunachal Pradesh, they are heart and mind and soul with India and that's the biggest strength that we have to keep Arunachal as part of India and Arunachal Pradesh will always remain a part of India. Nobody need have any fear or any apprehension in that behalf. Thank you. My name is Sami Suleiman. I'm the ambassador of Kuwait, New Delhi. I really appreciate and commend uh, your statement regarding the peaceful coexisting between different religion and different ethnicity in India. That's really characterizing India. And we in Kuwait, as well as GCC, we are very keen and big supportive of uh, dialogue between different religions in order to establish a bridge uh, towards mutual understanding. My comment on the wording uh, jihadi terrorism. Actually, jihad, the word as a word, has many definitions and meaning in Islam. And also, it has many categories. The first one is the soul jihad, which prevents the soul to commit any crime or bad behavior towards the other. So I 
I am really uh, very uh, a bit worried about combining the word jihadi with the word of terrorism. So I would rather prefer that we call it international terrorism. Terrorism has no religion, terrorism has no nationality, terrorism has no land. So I would rather really appreciate, I'd appreciate if we call it international terrorism. Thank you. No, I, I, have no, I have no difficulty in agreeing with you. In fact, uh, a Muslim scholar once wrote to me saying exactly what you are saying. And it, then he, when I pointed to him the definition of jihad in the dictionary, and he said he is going to sue the dictionary for giving that meaning for jihad. I have no difficulty in agreeing with you. But what else do I, what other phrase should I use? Arun started by using the phrase jihadi terrorism. I find, uh, <laughs> I find uh, Hafiz Saeed uses the word jihad in every speech that he makes. He has made three speeches in the last month, and every speech that he has made, he has used the word jihad. And he remains a free man in Pakistan, despite the dossiers against him. I find Al-Qaeda leaders use the word jihad. I find LET leaders use the word jihad. We have voice transcripts of the attackers in Mumbai and their handlers using the word jihad. So for the wrong reasons, perhaps, and unfortunate reasons, perhaps, if the terrorists use the word jihad, then those of us who are opposed to terrorism are forced to use the word jihad. I would be very happy not to use the word jihad, but I would like the terrorists, their leaders, their supporters also not to use the word jihad and bring a bad name to the great religion of Islam. Uh, we have the uh, Pakistan High Commissioner, Smalik, who's on the hot spot, I think. I was hoping that I would not be commenting on, on the issue or the subject. But just by way of clarification, Excellency, the Honorable Minister, we, as you said, we came to India for the Foreign Secretary level talks a couple of weeks ago in the hope that something positive would come out of it. And this, of course, as everybody knows, was a result of the telephone call that your Foreign Secretary made to our Foreign Secretary. After what we have been asking for nearly about, about a year or so, that dialogue is indeed the only way forward. So we welcomed the opportunity. We came here with a very open mind. And we were told that terrorism would be one of the main items of agenda. As a matter of fact, we welcomed it immediately. And the reason for that was that we have our own issues to raise with India in the context of terrorism. Balochistan, the activities of the Afghan of the Indian consulate to Afghanistan, etc., etc. So we had a good discussion on that. But the point I wanted to make that whatever, even if we sat across the table, agreed to disagree, even that is an improvement over the current state of affairs. So I think dialogue is the only answer. And I can assure you, sir, that the government of Pakistan has no intention whatsoever of any aggressive designed activities against India. Having said that, I would also like to remind you, Excellency, if I may, that we have repeatedly asked India to share with us any real-time information that you might have of any possible activity which you feel would originate from Pakistan. That would help us get to the bottom of it. And finally, this argument that I have heard repeatedly about state and non-state actors I think it's time that we you know, got to the bottom of that and felt and feel strongly in Pakistan that certainly there are no state actors who are involved in any act which would be detrimental to India. Uh, and finally, as regards the future course of action, yes, we have suggested a roadmap for a future interaction and we hope that India would respond to that positively. Thank you very much. Mr. Narmut, you would like to comment on that? Well, uh, I noticed the presence of His Excellency, the High Commissioner of Pakistan in India, 
and I, was, uh, I hope that uh, we would not have to enter into a public debate. Uh, even now, it's my desire that we do not enter into a public debate, but I wish to respond uh, most respectfully uh, to His Excellency's observation on one matter. I know that you mean what you say. Certainly, I know that you wish to mean what you say. <laughs> and that uh, you are stating what is Pakistan's, the Pakistan government's official brief to you. <laughs> I respect you for that. But let's put that to test, just a small test. You know, I know, most countries of the world know, and certainly our common friend, the US, knows that we have voice transcripts of conversations between the handlers and the attackers in 2611. We want to know whose voice is that? Who was that handler? We have given you a list of names. Why can't we test our commitment to anti-terrorism by sharing voice samples of those whom we suspect to be the handlers, which can be compared with the voice transcripts that have been recorded? And then we will know whether any of the handlers was a state actor or a non-state actor. It's a very simple test. On the one hand, we have the voice transcripts. We have a list of suspects. Please give us the voice samples of those suspects. Let's send it to a laboratory in a neutral country, Quantico in the United States. Let them tell us whether the voice transcript is that matches with the voice sample and then we will know whether the person was a state actor or a non-state actor. I mean, that's one way to break the logjam, isn't it? I'd like to believe that there is a distinction between state and non-state actors. For the sake of argument, let me accept that. Is it not then the obligation of the state of Pakistan to control and eliminate the non-state actors who are fomenting terrorism? As long as the non-state actor uses Pakistan's soil is it not the obligation of the Pakistan government to neutralize or eliminate the non-state actor who's fomenting terrorism? We obviously would need another session to deal with this uh, because this is just the beginning. Um, I'm afraid I have to close it because uh, Mr. Chidamram has to go. Parliament is in session. I'd like to thank Mr. Chidamram for for coming here and sparing his time and being frank with us and in uh, his analysis of the security threats facing this country, both internal and external. Uh, I think we should sleep sounder as long as he's in the job. I hope you like your job, though, Mr. Chidamram, in the Home Ministry. Well, you got, you've um, always... Um, Robert Gates, U.S. Defense Secretary under the Bush administration and now under the Obama administration said about his job, I do my job, I don't have to enjoy doing it. <laughs>